All right then, my friends. So we've seen the basics of what variants can do for us, but they can also do extra things for us as well. And we're going to dive deeper and take a look at that in a few minutes. But first of all, what I'd like to do is duplicate how this component transitions on the page to the other page components. So if I just refresh, we can see that this slides on, but the other two components that we go to, this one and this one, they don't slide on. So I'd like to copy the variants that we have for the container on the base component to the toppings and the order page as well. So let's do that first of all. So I'm just gonna copy those variants and take them to the toppings uh, page first of all, or component rather, and then down here, I'm going to come to this div and we need to apply motion to that div and at the bottom as well, never forget that, I often do motion.div, spell this correctly, and now we can apply a variance to this, so let me say variance is equal to container variance. Okay, and now we want to say that the initial state is dictated by the hidden property and we want the animate state to be dictated by the visible property hidden and visible okay so now we can save that and i'm going to copy this again and i'm going to paste it inside the order component and don't forget we need to actually import motion up here because we've not worked in the order component yet so let me import motion from framer motion like so and we've now got these variants now we can add motion to this container div and also the closing div as well and what i'll do in fact is just go to the previous component and i'm going to copy and paste these lines right here oops not there here okay so all we're doing is we're taking the animation from the base page that we have and we're applying it to the toppings component div and also the order component div so now both of those pages should zoom in from the right when they first start so let me go back to base and then click on one of these go to next and now we get that animation if i click on some toppings and press order and we get that animation as well awesome now, I also want to animate these things as well, separately from the surrounding div. So the children elements right here, I want to animate those things. In fact, not this, not the H2, but certainly I want to animate this. And in fact, what we'll do is surround this right here with a div and we'll animate that as well. So div, and then we'll copy this thing or cut it and paste it inside that div and we're gonna animate this as well. So what I'm going to do is create a new variant object and I'm gonna call that const child variants because they are children of this div, right? These things are children of the div and I'm gonna set that equal to an object. Inside we'll have a hidden state and all I'm gonna animate is the opacity. So I'm gonna set that to be zero to begin with and then down here, oops, we need an equal sign. Down here, I'm gonna say the visible property is gonna set the opacity back to one. So that's all I wanna do, animate from this state to this state on these children elements, the P and the div. So I'm gonna change these into motion elements, first of all, by saying motion dot in front of the opening and closing tags. And I wanna do that for the div as well, motion dot div and then down here, motion.div. So now we can apply variance to these things. So all I'm gonna do is say variance is equal to the child variance, like so. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna paste it to the div because we can use the same variance because they're both gonna have the same initial and animate properties. So let me put that right there. And again, we don't need to explicitly declare the initial and animate attributes because we get propagation and that's because these are called the same things as these so these lines right here are automatically propagated to the children elements that animate so we have the animation for the div which slides in and we have the animation for the children which should fade in now if i save this there is going to be a problem let me come over here we notice that the paragraph tag didn't actually fade in 
and it should be doing. Well, actually it did fade in, but it faded in off the screen straight away as the transition started and it's already fully faded in by the time it gets on the screen. So that kind of makes that animation a bit useless. Now, to combat this, we could add a delay to the child animation, or we could take advantage of transition orchestration properties in our variants. Variants allow us to use these, and these are just properties which we define inside the transition object. And one such property is the when property, which is going to help us in this situation. So let's go over here and let's go to the parent, the container variance, which is for this div right here. That's the parent. And inside this transition property, I'm going to use an orchestration property. And that is called when. And basically what this does is dictate when this animation should occur in relation to any children elements which are animating to. So one of the values I can use is before children. And this says that we want to complete this animation before any children animations occur. Okay, so now it's going to complete this one and then it's going to use the animation to fade in these things. Now at the minute we're only seeing this paragraph tag because we don't have any ingredients because we're just refreshing the last page. But even still, we should now see that animation of this going from a zero opacity to an opacity of one after this has animated because this occurs fully before children. This could be after children and that means that this is only going to animate the parent after the animation of this occurs but we're specifying before children so it fully completes and then the children animate. So let me save that and preview and now we can see that fully animates and then when this has fully stopped animating this fades in. So that's better. Now there is still a problem and that's because when this comes in it takes a while for this spring effect to fully stop. So let's play around with that spring effect so it stops quicker and this animates in a bit quicker as well. So we've said type is spring and the delay is 0.5. Let's actually take off that delay first of all. That will quicken it up a little bit. And I'm also going to add two other properties which we've not seen yet, which we can use with spring types. The first one is the mass. Now, a higher mass means that it moves slower and lower mass means it moves a bit quicker. So I'm going to reduce this to about 0.4. And the second spring property is going to be the damping. And the damping is the strength of the opposing force. A higher number means less oscillation. If it was zero, then this would just oscillate indefinitely. And let me just demo that. Let me press save and come over here. And we can see that this is oscillating left and right indefinitely. Not a great look. So what we can do is increase this to about eight to make the damping force a bit bigger. And it's going to stop that oscillation quite quickly like that. And now this animates in pretty quickly afterwards. So that is looking pretty good. Now, another orchestration property that we can add is the stagger children property. And this means that it staggers the animation of each child element by X amount so that they all animate one after another for a nice little effect. So, for example, let me come over here and come to this again. And I'm going to say stagger children. And I'm going to set this to 0.4 seconds. OK, so at the minute, it's not going to have any noticeable difference because, like I said, we don't have any of these things. We don't have any ingredients. So let's go back a page and add some ingredients first of all, like so. And now we'll see this come to effect. So it staggers the animation of these children by 0.4 seconds. If we added a value of two here, it means there would be a two second gap between those. So let me go back again and add some ingredients and now we get the first one it will be two seconds until the next one and if there was a third child animating in in the same way it would be another two seconds so by adding the stagger children property to the parent it staggers the animation of all the children elements so i'm going to change that back to 0.4 because i thought that was quite a nice effect and we'll go back and see this one more time let me just add some ingredients order 
and that staggers them in pretty nicely. So that's another thing that variants allow us to use, these different orchestration properties like when and stagger children. So next up, I want to move away from variants and take a look at something else called keyframes.